reassembled here on the wall to give you an idea of what one wing of this animal would have looked like. So um, when this was released in the, uh, you know, described in the 70s, it was the cover of uh, Science and you know, there's a picture over here of it uh, superimposed over an F-15 to kind of give you a scale. You know, it's, it's about, it's like a Cessna sized uh, uh, flying reptile. And one of the things that's really neat uh, that I like to talk about with this specimen is that as vertebrates, we all have pretty much the same body plan. We're all working with the same materials. And you can see that illustrated really well in something like this wing. So if you were to map that onto your own arm, the humerus is the upper arm bone here. The radius and ulna are the same bones that make up the forearm here. And then we get into the wrist. And so all the little carpal bones of the wrist are, you know, each one's the size of my fist here in this example. Um, this is a special bone called the pteroid that only pterosaurs have, and it's this modified uh, bone that comes out. And so there'd be skin that made up the wing, and there, this could adjust like the leading edge of the airfoil as it was gliding or flying. Um, and then the whole rest of this wing is made up of the palm, and then so you can see the, the metacarpals, the long bones of the palm here, <coughs> and the first three fingers actually have claws on them. And so you can sort of see the, the claws here. And then the rest of this wing is made up of the fourth digit. So the ring finger extends all the way out to this tip. And then from here back to the body, there would be this big flap of leathery, thick skin that made up the flying surface. Uh, and then if you imagine doubling that back to where John's standing, you know, that's yeah. actually even a little further than that. The problem <coughs> is, is, uh, is going to be the wingspan. 